Connor, good morning. Good to see you. Early morning for me today. I, I know it, it's quite quiet right now here, but it, it'll it'll start picking up. So I actually even got the video recording all all going here. And awesome. And I started the the other recording. Actually, I'm, we're gonna stay in automation. So um, so it's gonna once I'm ready to go, uh, I'm just gonna pot up the host mic and and then I'll let me see what one you're in and just so I know two two, two. yeah perfect guess two awesome and then I'll pod you up and guess two and I think we should be all ready to rock and roll perfect I'm gonna make sure okay that was good I, I needed to switch that over to program one so <laughs> it's like uh, otherwise I would be probably here <laughs> I wouldn't be hearing the right thing so how how have things been? Well, I, I will get into it more, but with track and field, and it's been good. Yeah, yeah it's been. Uh, seems like a long season, especially with weather always impacts spring sports right. the most. Um, so once we got kind of through that, is it the middle of April? It was still pretty cold and windy and yeah, rainy. Was, so once we got yeah. through, once we got yeah, through that, yeah, it that seemed way. to move a lot quicker. So it's been good, you know, just getting used to. The facilities, getting used to the kids, just like you know, same just story like with football, football right, right? Like right. very similar situation. So, felt a little more comfortable just having been through that process once already. Yes, no, I'm sure that that's helped you a lot. Yep. So, yeah, we can we'll get into kind of that and uh, how many people are going to lacrosse or do you have anybody on the to team be determined? So we have, so we have, I think it ended up being about 16 boys, 16 girls move on to sectionals. Which okay. will be tonight. So we're in McGuanago, right? Yep, in McGuanago tonight. Yep, we can get um, into that a little bit. Yep, and then it's top three from there. Move okay. on to nice. states. Um, most of our, I don't think we have anyone who's like a, a guarantee to make it out. We got a lot of kids and relays that are kind of out, looking like that three, four, five range. So it just comes down to how they perform tonight and. You can't play defense and track, but right. you know right. people still gotta perform to their best too. So. It'll be a uh, it'll be a good night, I think. Yeah, no, sounds good. I, I think maybe we can just get into it right now and and get started. Hello everyone. Good morning. And uh, actually, I'm I'm really happy and uh, honored to have Josh O'Connor join me here on a Thursday morning. This will be pre-recorded, so it'll play next Wednesday morning live. Uh, and uh, Coach O'Connor, I guess how are you this morning? And happy to have you uh, join me here this morning. Well, thanks for having me. I'm doing well this morning. We have sectionals tonight, so looking forward to that and uh, ready to get after it a little bit. So yeah, Co Coach O'Connor, uh, I'm the host, Mark Mandis, or Mark Carstens. I'm the host, Mark Carstens, talking to Coach Josh O'Connor, the Sun Prairie West football coach and Sun Prairie West track and field coach. So you coach both. Um, you're now in the spring season of track and field. And kind of what what's your thoughts been so far of your team, how they've done so far at, at Sun Prairie West in your first season? And I know you got a couple really talented athletes. Um, Jonathan Leah, who you got to coach in football yep. as well, he's on your, your team there at Sun Prairie West. And then Darius Chestnut, a really talented basketball player, also does track and field, so you have him as well. Um, I guess I actually want to talk about those two specifically, kind of with, with Darius and with uh, Jonathan. Do you feel like they're, a lot of their skills from, well, for Jonathan for football and then Darius for basketball, do you feel like they have some skills that really translate well to track and field. I mean, I'm sure they do, just with their athleticism and their speed and um, 
just kind of probably various things that probably really help them from basketball and football to track and field. Yeah, in general, when you're looking at the best track athletes, right, they're athletes. They're not necessarily um, super skilled in the, you know, the field of um, track, but you look for good athletes. So when you're talking about kids like John Wea, Darius Chestnut, um, another kid that we have, uh, Daniel Wilson, kind of along the same lines, really good athletes um, that have speed, that have explosiveness, that have power that you look for in a track and field athlete. And then it's just figuring out what events fit them the best with their skills that they have. So John Wea, very explosive, um, but then off of basketball season, he's got a little bit of the endurance and cardio level that you need to be a good 400 runner. So he's a pretty uh, important part of our 4x4 team that's still competing. He's also a pretty good jumper as well. So he does high jump for us and will be competing tonight in the high jump as his individual event. So in general, when you're, when you're talking about having a good track program, you're really relying on those multi-sport athletes. That's going to be where you really become a good program is when you can make connections with football, when you can make connections with basketball, girls volleyball, girls basketball, same idea. If you can make those connections and pull those kids into your program, um, that's when you really take off. Yeah, no, thank you for sharing, Coach O'Connor. And I know I think those are great points that you just made. And I guess with coaching football, Coach O'Connor, so that was your, your, you're in your first year, finished that with football, and now kind of through a lot of the season here in track and field, you're, you're on the sectionals here tonight at McGuanago. Um, kind of now that you've had both seasons almost kind of wrapping up here, kind of. What have kind of been your overall thoughts of just everything with Sun Prairie West so far in your first year of kind of everything, you know, with, with football, track and field? Yeah, I think number one is we have great kids in the school um, that have been a part of really good programs in the past. Just thinking about the group of seniors that we have on our track team, um, last year they were a part of, uh, boys were first place in conference, girls were second place in conference um, during their junior year. So they know what it takes to be good track athletes. It was the same thing with football, right? We were getting a group of kids who had been a part of a really good program at Sun Prairie, um, had talent, knew what it took to be a good football team. Um, so that made things really, I don't want to say easy, but it was, a, it was a smooth transition because they had some of those good habits built into them. Um, and then I think the, the other big thing is getting the right coaches put together was probably the biggest challenge uh, for me on both, both in both sports, football and track. Um, making sure that you're getting a good people around your kids that are good role models and doing things the right way, um, but also people who have the experience and expertise in all the different areas, especially when you're talking about track and field. Finding a pole vault coach, someone that knows how to get a kid to run with a 10-foot pole and plant it in a box and flip themselves over a bar, right? That's a pretty unique skill set. Um, and uh, when I was got hired and was looking around for a pole vault coach, there was also four different teams in the Madison area looking for a pole vault coach too. So, you know, I think that was the biggest challenge uh, when I compare the two sports. I would say the similarity were great kids who came from great programs um, and knew what it took to be good players and be a part of a good team. And then the kind of similar challenge was getting the right people into the coaching staff, both from a, a role model uh, perspective and expertise in the, the event or the position, wh whatever that expertise is that they need. Yeah, no, thank you for sharing, Coach O'Connor. And kind of, I was kind of curious, what is your favorite track and field event, would you say? I mean, there's so many different events, Coach O'Connor, that uh, you have. I mean, you have sprints, you have the long distance, um, you have hurdles, long jump, high jump, pole vault the discus throw, yep. javelin, shot play. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean there's so many Coach O'Connor uh, events that, that happen in track and field. Yeah, so I'll say my, my personal favorite from when I was competing, um, so I was a part of a pretty good tr track program. Um, I graduated from Belle Belle High School. Our track program is a combined program, so it's called Sugar River. Um, and I was a thrower, believe it or not, and really enjoyed the discus. That was also what, when I started coaching track and field, I was a throws coach. 
Um, so I would say discus, probably my favorite, like personal favorite one, especially when we're talking about like the field events. And then um, have also had an opportunity to work with some of our discus throwers this year, which has been has been fun to kind of go back to my roots as a thrower. Um, but on the track, my favorite one's four by one. Um, if you can get four kids who are really fast and get them to uh, dial in their exchanges and move the baton around the track, uh, that can be a really fun one. It's also a pretty nerve-wracking one because as uh, our boys 4x1 learned uh, regionals, one bad exchange can really set you back and make a big difference in that, uh, that event. So 4x1 uh, on the track just because of the I'm the sprints coach. I like making people fast, and if you can get four fast guys who can move the baton really well, um, it's really fun to watch. But then it's also a little, it's a little nerve wracking being up in the stands before that four by one. So the four by one is, is your favorite, yeah. Coach O'Connor. But uh, there's a lot of great events, and that that is a good, that is a fun one for sure. I, I, I'd agree. Um, but yeah, I kind of wanted to run through some of the events that. Uh, track and field has so you have the sprints the 100 meter 200 meter and 400 meter correct yep and then you have the mid distance the 800 meter and then the 1500 meter and you have long distance 3000 meter the steeple chase is that is that a, so is that not cool so at the high school level high school level it really varies it's even different between states so in wisconsin we go for our distance we go uh 1600 meter and then we go uh, 3,200 meter. Okay. Yep, so college goes 1,500 meter, and then they have uh, 3,000 meter. Some colleges have f uh, 5Ks as well. Uh, steeplechase is not, I don't think any high school states do that one. Uh, that's a unique one. That's where their distance runners are going over. I think there's two hurdles, and then there's also a pit of water that they jump off into. So. That's a, that's a fun one to watch if you're ever watching some college track meets. That's a good one. All right, so I'll have to remember that. That's more of a track yeah, high school yeah. or college yep. track thing, but that sounds really cool. Yep. Jumping over some water and yep. hurdles, that, that, that seems like a cool, that would be a cool thing to watch for sure. And then the hurdles as well. So then you have a 400 meter hurdle and a 100 meter hurdle so, kind of? Or? So we go, so our, the sprint hurdle at the high school level, once again, is 100 meter hurdles for the girls. Um, and their height is 36 inches that they're going over that hurdle, so three feet high hurdle. And then the boys, they go 110 meter hurdle um, over, and the hurdles are 39 inches. Then, once again, college does the 400 meter hurdles. Um, for both boys and girls, it's a, at the high school level, a 300 meter hurdle. Um, and that's a little, it's three inches lower than what their um, height is for the sprint hurdles. Okay. Well, uh, yep. So that's another one that's you know, it's uh, different between states, and then a unique position for a coach, right? Like you have to understand sprint mechanics, but you also have to understand the the technique to get over the hurdle. A lot of people think you jump over the hurdle, but that's not really the case. You got to kind of glide over the hurdle to keep that speed, and then you have to be able to you know coach kids in a 300 hurdle, which is similar to like a 400 meter dash in terms of the type of training you need for that. And uh, Coach O'Connor, I want to actually touch more on the sectional meeting tonight at McGuanago. Uh, how can the Sun Prairie community support it? I mean, I guess come out and be there. Are, are there any other ways that the Sun Prairie community can kind of support uh, Sun Prairie, I guess even Sun Prairie track and field in general? Yeah, so you know most other sports at this point they have a, a live stream option. Um, track and field you don't see that very often just because there's so much going on. I um, mean a lot of the live streaming that you get, like for example, if you live streamed our boys or girls basketball game, that's kind of an automated automated camera um, that's up in the gym that tracks the ball. You know that'd be hard to do in track because there's a lot going on. Um, so the the easiest way to support if you're not coming to the meet is if you go to tracksidetiming.com, they have live results. So pre and essentially you can sit on your phone and be as up to date as we are at the track meet with how results are coming in. Um, so once again, that's tracksidetiming.com. It'll update you right away. Awesome, awesome. Trackside, uh, trackside, what was it again? Trackside? Trackside timing. Tracksidetiming.com, yep. uh, people have to remember that one. So no, that's, thank you for sharing that. and. Uh, I know there's, they're actually going to be streaming today, I think, for both girls' softball games uh, for Sun Prairie East and Sun Prairie West um, will be streamed as well. So 
it also tune into those. Yep. Uh, they're on to the round. Well, for Sunbury West, it's kind of like round two yep. because they. I don't know if you you knew Josh O'Connor, but uh, on Tuesday, um, Sunbury West won their regional softball game yep. five one over uh, Wanakee, and now they play today later against Toma. Yep. At Toma. So that, that's that's quite the hike to get up there. That yeah. is, that is, I, I, Coach O'Connor. That's a that's yep. a big that's a bit of a hike, but uh, yeah, for people who can support that event as well, definitely do because it, it's another uh, great Sun Prairie West uh, sporting event that's going to happen today. Yeah, it's been pretty impressive with just you know really post COVID, one of the biggest advances in high school sports has been the live streaming aspect of it. Um, you know, before COVID, you probably weren't live streaming any anything unless it was broadcast by a organization like we have here, right, the Sun Prairie Media Center, which can can travel places and broadcast remotely. But um, now, especially Huddle, which is kind of our uh, high school sport film, right, that you film the game, upload it to Huddle, your kids can look at it. Um, but they've really stepped up in terms of the live streaming. Um, like I said, that automated automated uh, tracking in football, it's the same thing. They track the ball, basketball, they track the ball. Um, I know they did some stuff with softball and baseball. I think that's where the live streaming comes from um, as well. So it's been impressive to just see that advancement. And it makes it so you can be sitting at home. Maybe you can't make the trip to Toma or anything like that, but you can still be a supporter of the program. Yep. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, you may not be able to make the track to Toma or, or tonight to, to your uh, track and field event in Iguanago, but you can always, like you say, follow along, stream it live, and um, always donate to, yep. you know, make, you know, donate to the, um, in various ways to those programs, um, and then come out and support as much as you can. So, um, definitely all ways you can support Sun Prairie West Athletics uh, in general. And I want to touch more, Coach O'Connor, on the discus throw, actually. Kind of, uh, I guess, kind of what kind of all goes into the discus uh, throw in track, uh, in the track and field. And uh, do you have someone on the team that you would say is maybe kind of a discus thrower specialist? <laughs> or, or, or maybe not, but... Yeah, so, so to start with uh, the last question there, Lauren Adams on our girls team um, is very good at the discus. Um, her mark, I think she threw 124 feet, um, which puts her in the top 20 in the state for girls discus. Um, so I would say she's kind of taken that role as discus ex expert. Um, but she also, she did a unique combination. She was a thrower, but then also did triple jump, which you don't see that very often. Um, so she pulled in a lot of points for us in both the throws and the triple jump. So discus is, when you're comparing the two, right, discus and shot put are the two throws events in the high school. Um, shot put is kind of your more, your more power-based run, right? Like you see some, some big dudes, some uh, strong ladies that get in the circle and just kind of muscle the shot put out there and chuck it as far as they can. The discus is a little more unique um, in that it's kind of a a combination of power and technique, um, even more than the shot put is. Now, to be really good at the shot put, you gotta focus on your technique too. But the discus, you'll see some of these kids who are pretty good at the shot put that can't figure out the discus just because they can't figure out the technique. Because um, you're rotating out of the back of the circle. So if I'm throwing towards that wall, I'm actually gonna start facing the opposite wall. I'm gonna rotate out of the back and a lot of people call it a spin, but it's really you rotate into like a sprint. So you rotate into a sprint, um, you keep the discus, you know, a lot, of, once again, a lot of people think you kind of like grab and hold on to the discus, but you really just rest it on your last knuckle. Um, and then you get to the front of the circle and you let it rip into the, into the sector. So it's, there's a lot of technique that goes into it, especially to be good at it, like Lauren is. Um, and that's probably where she's, made her biggest jumps is really honing in some of those finer points of the the technique that comes with discus that makes makes her pretty good at it i've thrown a discus a few times coach o'connor and uh i don't know i didn't go uh, super <laughs> well when i tried it but it was it was fun though to, to yep. just even give it a try and uh just kind of get a feel for how the 
how the disc feels in your hand and yep. giving it a toss. So yeah, it's it's one of those things where whenever anyone does it for the first time, they don't look like a natural. I don't think there's anyone who's a natural discus thrower per se. Um, but you know, people can people who are good athletes that are used to having to work on footwork. Um, once again, that's a that's an event where you see a lot of multi sport kids excel in just because they're good with footwork they you know they understand how their body works um, and that translates over into a, a technique focused event like discus yeah no thank you for sharing and kind of what skills and fundamentals do you like to work on a lot with with your track and field athletes like throughout a week and in practice what are kind of a lot of skills and fundamentals you try to work on yeah so once again track and field is is so unique um, especially even like you think middle school track and field everyone's kind of doing every event and you know you're trying to get people to feel things out high school you really start to get people to hone in on whatever their event is um, so the way we set up our practice is we have primary event groups that meet every day so that would be we have our short sprinters which are mostly our 100 200 meter type of kids but can also do the 400 long sprints which is 200, 400, and then our distance kids along with throws and pole vault. So those are kind of like our five primary events. So I coach the short sprints. So typically what our usual practice looks like is we go through some activation and mobility just so, right, kids have been sitting around in school for seven hours, so their, their body's not really primed and ready to sprint fast. Um, so we take some time to just get their body warmed up and ready to go. And then we do a lot of sprint technique drills that focus on what your body needs to look like while you're sprinting. You know, a lot of people think, oh, just run as fast as you can, but there's actually um, a lot of technique to getting kids who have not been taught how to sprint, how to sprint. And then typically we're doing some sort of time sprint as our workout for the day. So it might be, hey, we're gonna run a 40 yard dash, uh, or we're gonna do a 20 meter fly where they build up to their top speed and they try and hold it for 20 meters. So we're mixing in things like that that are, are giving us data on how fast they're moving, but then also it makes it competitive for them um, because they're getting a time just like they would in the meet uh, that they can compare against their fellow teammates or compare against their previous self. So that's kind of like sh what short sprints looks like. Long sprints is pretty similar in, in the setup. Uh, distance. They do a lot more, obviously, your cardio training. Um, they might go run around the neighborhood for 20 to 30 minutes, or they might do a workout on the track. So distance is kind of um, focusing on, on different areas there. And then we kind of talked about throws, right? They're a unique thing as well. Um, so they'll typically have their, their technique drills that they go through before they actually get in the circle and start, bro start throwing. No, thank you for sharing. So yeah, a lot, lot that, uh, you goes into obviously yep. training and practice and things for track and field because like you said there's so many different events you have running you have jumping um you have throwing so it's a variety of different yep. things uh that track and field offers maybe, maybe more so than some other sports what, when you say cultural counter i mean it's just yeah i think variety. i think it's a variety and it pulls in um a lot of different type of athletes you know you're typically getting cross-country kids who are coming um, out for track you get football kids you get basketball kids um, and then you get kids who don't do another sport but love track so you get a wide and probably one of the reasons why I like coaching you know football is kind of a you get a certain type of kid in football right and they're all kind of similar in their mindset and their attitude and then you come to a track program especially when you have boys and girls together um, you're getting all different types of type of athletes, um, kids who are you know 4.0 valedictorian type of students to kids who are uh, just freshmen who are trying to figure out their biology class and figure out whether or not they like the sport of track. So you get a wide range of kids, uh, which makes it pretty enjoyable. Yeah, I, I'm sure it's definitely different than football, like you said, just because yeah, it can bring in a variety of different people and and athletes and. Because like with football, I think a lot of people, it, it's either, you know, you got a lot of big, <laughs> muscular, yep. strong kids for the most part. Um, I mean, other than, because I mean, if you don't fit a certain body type with football, it is a little tricky. Because yep. I mean, if you're smaller and, you know, 
more thin, you know, and fa just fast, you kind of limited probably to playing running back or wide receiver. Yeah. Or, um, it, it limits you a little bit in football if, if you don't have a certain body type. As yeah. for in track and field, you can have a variety of different body types and obviously be successful. And it's, um, I think it's a little bit easier for people of different body types to find success. I yep. Think. Yep. And the, the thing is, too, you might see um, in the same event, right, like 100 meter dash even, right, you'll have your, shor your shorter kids who are a little bit more uh, muscular that are still pretty fast, and then you have your, your kids who are tall and have long strides but are pretty fast as well, and even, even in the throws, right, like I don't look like a thrower, but I was a decent discus thrower, um, and we have some, some kids on our team that are good at the discus and good at shot put that you wouldn't you know, look look at the team and say, oh, that kid's the thrower, right? There, even within the events, there's different body types that can be successful. Yes. No. Thank you for sharing. And uh, Coach O'Connor, team dinners. I kind of wanted to touch on that uh, for Sun Prairie West track and field. Do you have that for, <coughs> for track and field as well? I know you definitely did for football. There were team dinners. Um, does track and field have that? And kind of what are the dinners like? Maybe similarly or differently than football or. Yeah, so we did three team dinners this year for our track program, um, and we did them, so we did one, we went the whole, Mar whole month of March without a track meet, um, which you can do indoor meets, we just didn't do any this year, just knowing we were a new program, had to get our, our feet underneath us. Um, so we did one at the end of March as kind of a celebration of, hey, the, the training month is over, we're getting ready for meets, so kind of a celebration there. And then we did one before our big meet um, over at Sun Prairie East, the Paul Frank invite, and then one before our varsity conference. So we kind of we've kind of put them at significant points in our season to kind of be an opportunity because, like I said, track is you know you're kind of with your event group more than is more than you are with the rest of the team. You think football, right? Like yes, you have your position group, but at some point you got to come together and practice as a whole team. So we use, a, we use those team dinners as an opportunity just to get everyone together, um, to reconnect with each other, especially if it's been a busy week or so. And you know, our track booster club did a great job with those. Um, you know, similar to our, our touchdown club for our, our football team, um, did a fantastic job of getting a club started on short notice and then being able to uh, do what it takes to make it a positive experience for our kids. So. You know, the food was similar. Uh, we did, I think we did taco bar. Uh, some of that came from borrachos. And then we had um, pasta the night before. So the kids really like pasta. Um, that's kind of their main thing, probably a little more than, than your, uh, your football team dinners where variety is better there. Um, the kids like to carbo load before their big track meets. Yeah, no, I, I, I know I've, I've had some friends that uh, have been in kind of done track and field and then uh, cross country as well and they, they always were telling me you know I, I, I you know, eat a lot of carbs yep. before the uh, events and uh, pasta was I know common uh, for some of my friends who, who did that as well yep. but uh, I mean I, I like pasta but uh, I probably like the taco bar more for me I, I, I'm <laughs> yeah. more, more, more taco person than pasta yep. if, I, if I had to tell you Coach O'Connor yep, I agree with you I, th I think I, I, more tacos for me. Steak, uh, uh, steak would be a definitely <laughs> a, a, a food I would really like, but uh, maybe a little, little, maybe a little more expensive than uh, the cost than uh, maybe most Very of the team dinners yep. probably uh, could afford. But uh, anyway, that, some foods that uh, I always like. Pizza, pizza is always a good choice. Yep. I, I, I don't know if you've, uh, if any of the team dinners have had pizza, but that's always we a good did, choice. Yeah, we did for our football hand one, and then we're going for track. Our banquet uh, dinner will be will be pizza. Nice, so nice. I'm sure, sure the kids will gobble that up pretty quickly. <laughs> I, I don't think that'll last long, yep. Coach O'Connor. They'll, they'll eat that fast. So, uh, but anyway, any meets, I guess, I mean, I know there's two meets that are going to be coming up, because, I mean, you have the McGuanago meet tonight, yep. sectionals, and then... If, as long as things you know go well for your team, you, they'll have an opportunity to have some some of your team go to UW Lacrosse, where I went to college. So oh, nice. I, I, I'm an Eagle, <laughs> an Eagle grad myself. So I, I know that facility quite well over there, and uh, yeah, get to be at uh, UW Lacrosse first state track and field. So yep, 
it's always a it's it's a good experience and uh, I talked with the kids yesterday right like it's always good to move on to regionals and then get to sectionals and now and it's a it's a quick turnaround so the way that this week we had Monday well let's start the weekend we had some Prairie West prom on Saturday right so for a lot of our kids that was a, a late night um, that their body had to recover from and then Monday was our regional meet and we've at this up until that point we had not had a Monday meet yet so that's a unique situation where you're coming off the weekend and you gotta go right into a meet um, and then we turn around and have to compete again on Thursday which is a pretty quick turnaround um, especially for our kids who were doing three or four events on Monday so it's a quick turnaround and they really had to focus on their recovery you know get sleep um, you know hydrate eat well stretch and focus on that recovery so they're ready to go for Thursday because it is a it's an awesome experience to be at at the state meet um, you know once again I was a thrower in high school and finished my high school career at UW lacrosse at the state meet um, you know it's something you'll always remember wrapping up your your high school career as an athlete at the the pinnacle of track and field um, but the other thing too is we have some young athletes that have the potential to either go as a part of a relay or as an individual and it's always good to get that first state meet under your belt because the state meet is unlike any other meet um, especially when you're talking about championship Saturday and those stands are filled and if you're in a, in a race and you're coming down the, the home stretch at the end like there's 10,000 people who are screaming and yelling while you're racing like that's a unique experience that usually brings out the best in the athletes um, but if it's your first time, it can make you a little nervous and make you underperform. So especially as young athletes, it's kind of, let's get you there, let's get, get you that experience. Um, and if you're a sophomore and you go to state, well, now your plan should be, okay, as a junior and senior, I'm going to go there, but I know what to expect and I can perform better those two years. So part of it is trying to get our seniors there, right, as a, as a positive way to end their track and field career, but then also get some of those younger athletes an opportunity to experience it so then we can move forward and say hey you experience it now now next time we're going back there we're doing something special yeah absolutely and uh i know veterans memorial field's beautiful facility it really is over at lacrosse i um your uh team if, if they get to go there they'll, they'll really enjoy it because yep. it, it, it's a great uh, facility great great place so that, that football field is beautiful yep. too. It's, it's and really they just nice. built that new door or new indoor track facility too. Oh really? Wow! I I, I, I don't think I got to experience. I didn't get to experience nope. the indoor yep. part. Yep. That is there. That just got put up. They were putting it up last year um, okay. during the state, and I think it just opened um, this winter. Was the first year that they were able to use it. No, that's awesome. Yep. Well, I well, <laughs> I, like I said, I didn't get to experience the uh, indoor one, but the outdoor one is also very nice. Yep. I did get to experience that. And, um, yeah, beautiful facilities over there at Lacrosse. Ho hope your team gets an yep. opportunity hope. to experience that whole the the whole atmosphere yep. there. Yeah, and the, I think once again, track is unique. Um, even if you, the probably the most comparable sport is wrestling in terms of it's an individual event that contributes to a team score but in wrestling you can still if you win your regional as a team your whole team moves on and then there's a team sectional and then there's a team state track is really unique in that um, so our girls won regionals on Monday um, they won the team score but only our girls who were top four moved on right the rest of the girls if they were a part of the team but they didn't get top four, they didn't move on, even though we won regionals. So you only move on your individuals and they keep contributing to your team score. Um, so you can go to the state meet and you can have two really good individuals that win four events and potentially win the meet with just two kids there. Um, I think if you remember Jared Abaderis, um, former Badger player, he went to, I forget what high school he went to, but it was like a D2 or D3 and I think he, pretty much won the state meet by himself. Um, he did two hurdle events and then a field event and won all three of them and, and won the meet. So it's kind of, it's unique in that regard um, that you only move on your individuals, but you keep a team score going. Yeah, that is really unique. I mean, you certainly don't see that in football yep. culture. Yes. Your, yep. old, your old team either makes it or they all go home. It's, yep. 
it's not not a situation where uh, really I don't really know many other sports where I mean other than maybe cross country where you can have an individual you know and continue to advance in cross country you still can move your team on right um, and you can move yep and then, and that once again that's unique because you have individuals that can move on to the state meet and then you can have teams move on and then you know you might finish third overall but you know you could be first in the team scoring right like it's just yeah it's a, a cross country and track are probably the two most unique um postseason processes that i know of yeah no agreed and another one that's maybe to me kind of unique too is golf as i was yep. just thinking yep. golf can be kind of unique too because you could you could potentially have your team make it yep. and then you could have an individual yeah really i think that's kind of, it's kind of the same setup cross country wise there you can have your individuals move on you can also have your team move on if they're they're at the, and i think tennis might be kind of similar too. yeah yep tennis yep. yep that's another good one too so tennis and golf a couple other ones that can have some unique things that way as well. But um, good luck anyway to your team tonight and uh, your uh, teammates that uh, are going to be at McGuanago in sectionals. And hopefully, like I say, you have everybody. Everybody hopefully is able to move on to that's your a, goal. Yep, that's that's, the, that's the, the goal. BW lacrosse. And once again, the, the the sectional meet is probably the most unique because every event only has eight kids in it. Um, so typically you go to a meet and you're like, well, there's 24 kids in this event. Of the, let's take the 100, right? Like there's 24 kids running uh, the 100. But at sectionals, um, there's only eight kids in that race and the top three move on. So if you're in the race, you got a good chance at being top three um, if you play the numbers. And then it just comes down to, as we were talking before we got on the, on the show, it comes down to who's ready to perform. Um, have seen a lot of surprise finishes at a sectional meet just because someone shows up more ready to perform than someone else so um, seeds and previous times all go out the window and it's it's one race to figure out who the top three are and top three move on yeah I, I, it'll be really great to see who the top three are that move on and you said eight 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 are involved in it so yep so it's, you got a three and eight chance yep. to make it yep. basically almost a fi almost 50 50 yep. chance to move on to state yep so. so three people will be really happy at the end of the race <laughs> and five people will probably not be so that's that's five just the way it goes yep. five disappointing people and uh three very happy people yep. but that you know that's how it goes so that you know it, it, that's why it's you you have to work hard to make it to Correct, state yep. it's, it's uh just like with uh football it's you know it's an accomplishment and it's something you have to work hard yep. towards so um, but anyway, I want to get more into the booster club, Coach O'Connor. I know you touched on it a little bit, so you do have one as well for track and field, just like with football. Um, kind of, what has it been like, maybe similarly or differently with the booster club of track and field versus football? And uh, are there any parents specifically you'd really like to thank uh, for the track and field uh, yeah, booster so, club? Yeah, so track and field, the booster club process has probably been a little easier per se just because the the fundraising the um, the goal of fundraising is less than football right football um, our fundraising goal was a little higher just because we were doing I think we ended up doing 12 team dinners um, we had other opportunities where we gave our kids food you know a couple of the days uh, we do some food before our games and things like that so the the fundraising goal was just different in football than it was in track. Track is a little bit more low maintenance from that end. Um, but still wanted to do some good things for our athletes to give them a positive experience. Um, a couple of people that kind of took the lead on that, Tra Tracy Frank, um, her son is a senior, her son is Devin Frank. Uh, she really took the lead and did a great job of organizing it. Um, Greg Shamanic, um, and then uh, blink it on her name, but uh, Magits. Um, we have two Magits that are on the team, Alex Magit and Layla Magit. Uh, their mom did a great job too. So we had kind of a core group um, that really took the lead and did a nice job with it. And now obviously, as always, right, when, when senior parents move on, they're usually not sticking on with the booster club. So trying to kind of, that's a session plan of making sure that we have people who can, who can step in and make sure it, it moves in the right direction um, will be the next step with that booster club. 
I remember Layla Magic from uh, basketball, yep. actually. She she really grew throughout the season in yep. basketball yep. as a freshman. She was only a freshman, so somebody who really grew throughout the season. And yep. she actually started to get some more playing time. Uh, Coach McLean started yep. giving her more playing time at the end of the year. She, she really grew throughout the year, yep. I felt. Yeah, and like I said, that's the... Uh, when track programs really kind of hit their peak is when they're utilizing those athletes, right? The the star basketball players, the star football players, the star um, soccer players on the boys' side, right? Like if you can get them to come out for track in the spring um, and just uh, benefit from their natural athleticism, it can be very beneficial for your team. So yeah, Layla is a great example of someone who um, on the girls' side is a, you know, we kind of talked about John Wea already. Um, Layla is a really good example of a, a young multi-sport athlete that could do some special t things both on the basketball court and on the track um, by the end of her senior year. And I'm sure she's growing in track and field yep. just like she is growing in, in basketball. Yep. So she's, she's still very young. I mean, yes. just a freshman. So yep. she's going to still have three or, yeah, three more years. Three more yeah. years, yep of uh, being able to play at the high school level and hope your, your hope for her is that she's able to continue her athletic career regardless of if, if that's with basketball or with track and field whatever that exactly, is yep. uh, in college hopefully yep. for her because I mean I, I think Layla's an athlete that definitely has the ability and talent to probably continue her athletic career in yep. college I definitely think yes yep it's it's a future she can think about yep yep especially when just her uh her length and athleticism, right, is the biggest thing in, in basketball. Uh, if you're a certain height and you have the length, but you're also still athletic enough, you're going to have some opportunities at the next level. Yeah, absolutely. Um, anything else, Coach O'Connor, you want to share about track and field at all? No, I think, um, as we said, it's been a, it's been a positive experience. Um, a really good group of um, experienced athletes that were coming from the previous program at Sun Prairie. Um, one thing I'd just like to highlight is it was awesome to see, I would gauge that 60 to 70 percent of our kids had never done track and field before. So while we did have a solid group of 30 to 40 percent of our kids that were experienced track athletes, um, we had 60 to 70 percent of kids who, whether they were freshmen, so they'd never done high school track, or they were multi-sport kids who were like, yeah, I want to give this a try now, um, whether that was through relationships they had with coaches, or other athletes um, so one that was great to see that we had so many kids right that's the as we talked about with football the one of the reasons for splitting the high schools was to give more kids opportunities and we we saw that in track we saw it in football um, so it's great to see that you know that goal of splitting the high schools is coming to fruition and really benefiting our athletes especially um, as well as you know our students across the board but then also our, I think our coaching staff did a really good job of, of understanding our group of athletes um, and progressing them through the season to the point where you know our JV meet, that was our last JV meet of the season, we had probably almost every athlete have a personal record um, and finish on a high note and that was a, a positive experience for us. And Coach O'Connor, we've seen success from both schools, even with the split with athletics. We we're still seeing yep. success. I mean, Sun Prairie East in football, they, you know, got, made it pretty far. Yep. They got to level three of the playoffs, lost to Cattle Moraine. Um, you know, Sun Prairie West girls basketball, they, they, you know, went on a little bit of playoff run. You know, your team for football got to at least experience the playoffs yep. and got to play DeForest. Um, so I mean. A lot of successful things and softball right now for both East and West they're they're playing in the playoffs and yep. uh, actually I want to get into that more actually Sun Prairie West for softball what's kind of your prediction today Coach O'Connor I don't know if you oh know well, much I, about softball I, I don't know Toma. I don't know much about Toma um, I'm assuming they're the higher seed though because yeah, they're, the two you know, seed. they're the two okay seed. they're the two seed um you know I think Sun Prairie West is gonna win it I think it's gonna be a close one probably like a four to three score um, I'm assuming Isabel Royal is pitching. Um, yeah, I'm assuming Isabel Royal yep, is too. Yep, I've had her in class, and I think she's uh, she's a gamer, so I think she's going to make it happen for them. She's a great, really, really good yes. softball pitcher. Yep. I mean, I've gotten to see her throughout the season because I've uh, been fortunate enough to actually cover okay. some of the softball yep. games for Sunbury West this year and gotten to see Isabel Royal and Sophia yep. Royal too. Yep. And, um, Audrey Davis, you you know you know. Uh, 
her brother, yep. Will Davis, yep. very well. <laughs> he was on your football team. So. Yeah. yeah, and that's actually a lot of, I mean, a lot of the softball players I either know through um, teaching, so I teach like a, a class that's pretty junior heavy, so I get to see a lot of those athletes, but I had both the Royals actually as seniors in that class too, um, so got to know a lot of them through school, and then also we do our, our summer strength and conditioning program is for all athletes, and a lot of them participated in that last summer too, so you know, it's great to, the, one of the reasons why I like running strength and conditioning programs is because it's an opportunity to work with more than just football players. Like I said, that's one of the reasons I love doing track is because you get such a diverse group of kids and you start to build relationships with um, athletes that I wouldn't build that relationship with um, if I didn't do it. And it's kind of the same thing with strength and conditioning. If, if we can build relationships with all the athletes in the school, that's just positive for everyone, right? More relationships, yes, the better. Exactly. No, agreed, Coach O'Connor. Yep, the Royal Sisters probably are going to need to lead the way, I think, yep. for Sun Prairie West softball tonight. And then, you know, a couple other seniors as well. I mean, you have Emily Petrie, who's, gonna, who's a senior on that team. Um, Ashley Ron, a couple, you know, those are a couple other yep. seniors that are um, starters on that team. So they're actually have four starters, I think, that are seniors. Uh, that'll be moving on. Yep. So they'll have a pretty new looking lineup next year yep. uh, for softball. So Coach Presto will have a lot of probably new pieces to kind of figure out and see who's going to start, who's going to yep. step up for them. Yep. Yeah, that's, I mean, kind of similar for us with uh, with football next year. We had a, a strong group of seniors that are moving on to, to bigger and better things. And we have a, a good group of returning juniors that got some experience, but we're going to be we're going to be putting some new faces out there, but uh, we have a good group that I think is ready to, ready to roll into the summer. You know, summer's kind of preseason football uh, with strength and conditioning and our summer practices that we get to have, but we've had a good off season and looking forward to, to getting the kids on the field um, after a good off season. Yeah, and another thing with softball too, Coach O'Connor, is a lot of the, there's a lot of siblings that are athletes too, like on that softball team. Like yep. Like Brooke Rhodes, you yep. obviously you know her brother very well, Brady Rhodes, yep. um, and then Reagan Hunley, Jackson Hunley, yep. her brother, the obviously well-known uh, yep. baseball, baseball player, player over at Sun Prairie West. Um, trying to think of some some other. No, you brought up Audrey, Audrey Davis. Yep. yep, Audrey Davis with Will Davis, her brother that uh, you've gotten to know really well. So I mean, those are just a few um, of kind of you know it's kind of that that family athletic yep. tree there with that kind of uh, carries over. It's kind of interesting how, how that works out, where it just, it's, it's a family, yep. a lot of times it's a family tree of af af athletes uh, in fam with families. Yeah, yep, it's always, and it's interesting to see how everything kind of, how it goes, it ebbs and flows, right? Like, um, you know, Brady Rhodes is a junior, Will Davis is a senior, and they have two younger sisters, right? But at some point, the Rhodes family will kind of, their kids will move on, and then we'll get a new, family right, right that right. and it's just interesting to see that kind of that ebb and flow of of generations coming through um which i saw when i was at Oconwalk, right like you start to see the next generation come up and i'm excited to see that here at sun prairie west too yeah no it'll be really cool and neat to watch but for sure uh anything else coach o'connor you want to touch on at all today no i think i mean um one big thing would just be um at football wise our touchdown club going to have a lot of the same uh, fundraising opportunities for people to be involved in. Um, we did the, the coupon card sales that will be going on this summer again. Um, we'll have our program where businesses will be able to put advertisements in there um, as well as people can be a member of our touchdown club. Um, there's three different levels of memberships um, that people can, can purchase that come with all different types of incentives. Um, everything from our top level you get four for uh, free tickets to our first home game and tickets to our uh, inaugural, or not inaugural, but our first tailgate, our first game tailgate, um, down to, I think they're going to have, uh, they're calling them howl towels now. Howl that, towels. That'll be part of it that uh, will be waved on third downs and things like that, I guess. So so those would be the three ways. If you are interested in you know helping out our touchdown club in any ways, um, whether that's card sales, uh, add in the program, or membership, um, you can always find my email through the school. Um, we're also on Facebook, Some Prairie West Touchdown Club, Some Prairie West Football. 
um, would be the easiest ways to get a hold of us. And then the other thing too is, as we're getting into the summer with our football program, um, always looking for ways to give back to the community. Um, we've done a couple so far as we've kind of gotten our program settled in. Uh, we were taking some players over to Prairie View Middle School and they were doing some activities with uh, the AVID students there in seventh grade. Um, we're doing some projects with the Sunshine Place, um, using our players to help them out with some landscaping needs. So if there's a, um, ever anything that people need help with that you need some big strong young men to help with, right? They're always good at moving things. Um, you know, just let me know, get in contact with me and, and we'll see what we can set up. Yeah, Coach O'Connor, thank you for sharing all that. And yeah, definitely get in contact with you with, with anything with football yep. or track and field related. Yep. Uh, and actually, with football, I want to get back to talking about Brady Rhodes a little bit. He's playing baseball right now. Yep. Um, kind of getting some, mostly playing first base in baseball, but he pitches some too. So kind of first base pitching, kind of two, two main spots yep. for Brady. Uh, what do you think maybe can help him, or what do you think baseball maybe can help him with, with quarterbacking uh, translating into the fall? I think, especially when you look at pitching, um, you know, when you pitch, you're at, you're in a spotlight. You have the ball in your hand every single every single play, right? If you're playing outfield, you might get the ball hit to you like three times in a game, right? Like, um, but if you're the pitcher, the spotlight's on you. So I just think about um, I went to the when they hosted Sun Prairie East. Um, Jackson Hundley was pitching, hit his pitch limit, so had to come out for the very last at bat. Uh, Brady comes in. Obviously, everyone's got his got their eyes on Brady and he and he strikes the Sun Prairie East batter out to win it right like so just the opportunity to be in those pressure moments is very similar to when you're the quarterback balls in your hand every play and you got to make some make some things happen in big moments um, whether that's passing the ball making a read on a run pass option or tucking the ball and carrying it you got to make something happen so I think just those experiences for Brady will benefit him moving into to the football season because once again we talked about the benefit of splitting the school. Um, athlete like Brady Rhodes might not have had any of the experiences he had this year if we're still one high school. Um, he was the backup JV quarterback his sophomore year when some prairie was all together and then he had the opportunity to start 10 varsity football games his junior year and then have opportunities to pitch in some pretty big moments and play first base um, for nearly every baseball game so far so I think he's just a really good when I think about the benefits of the split happening um, I think he's a very good representation of how um, it's benefited our athletes as well as all our students and he's had I mean pretty good competition that uh, when temporary was one school that he had to Try to beat out yep. I mean, Jerry yes. Kaminsky. I yep. mean, Jerry Kaminsky is a tremendous quarterback. Correct. Yep. Somebody who's going to be moving on, playing at, at University of North Dakota yep. next year, and um, definitely got Division One offers and things like that. So, obviously, Jerry Kaminsky probably will go down as one of the better quarterbacks in Sun Prairie, uh, and probably in the in, <laughs> in state in the, the state of Wisconsin football. He'll probably be be remembered as one of the better ones too. Yes, for sure. So I mean, you know, you look at him, you look at Drew Kavanaugh. Drew Kavanaugh's a really good yep. quarterback too. So there was some tough competition that mm -hmm. Brady had to beat yep. out there and with when Sun Prairie was one school and I remember trying to I'm blanking the name of the quarterback before Jerry that was quite successful I think too. It was Brady Stevens? Yes, Stevens. Yep. Yeah, Brady Stevens too. I mean yep. you look at him too. Another really good quarterback. Yep. So I mean, you look at these quarterbacks that Sun Prairie's had, and uh, they've had some really good starting quarterbacks over there. Yes, yes, no doubt. I mean, just those two alone, Jerry Kaminsky yep. and Brady Stevens, so those are two names that people remember probably for a very long yep. time here in Sun Prairie. Yep. Um, I guess anything else, Coach O'Connor, you want to touch on today? I, I don't know if there's anything else yeah. that I wanted to touch on, but I think that kind of covered a that, lot of the yep, things. Covers it from my end. I appreciate you having me on and you know highlighting everything that's going on at Sun Prairie West, not just track and football. I know you do a, a lot of a lot of interviews and a lot of thank coverage you. of Sun Prairie West and we appreciate that. Oh thank you Coach O'Connor. I, I love covering Sun Prairie West athletics and definitely want to continue doing that. I think I will a little bit with Todd Richmond again in the winter time. I think we're going to 
cover some very West girls basketball okay. together. Nice. So I think quite a few of the games. So I'm excited for that. Yeah, for sure. And definitely want to help out again next year with some very West uh, softball too. I love, I love this softball yep. this year. That was really fun. Yeah. Yeah. Two very fun teams to watch there. Girls basketball and girls softball. It is. It really is. And uh, obviously I'll, I'll continue watching your, your football team for sure. Hopefully I can do some camera work again for, for uh, Sun Prairie West football games. I got, got to do camera for quite a few of the games. So that was, that nice. was a fun experience. Yep. So hope I can do that again and maybe in the future even call some of these games. That's, yep. that's what yep. I, I want, I want to do too. So getting some, uh, broadcast, more broadcasting experience. So. Yep. Yep. Just work. You got to work your way you up, right? Way up, coach, just right. like the coaching world. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Just like the coaching world. Got to so. earn your stripes. Exactly. Absolutely. So. Uh, well, thanks, you, Coach O'Connor, for joining me this morning. Really appreciated the time and getting to talk to Sun Prairie West track and field and a little bit about softball as well. And, uh, yeah, support in any way you can both events tonight. There's two big Sun Prairie West events going on tonight. The game at Aptoma for the Sun Prairie West girls softball game, 5 o'clock start time. Um, and they're going to Toma Elementary School, I believe. I think it's at an elementary, nice. elementary field is what I heard. Yep. So uh, it be a unique atmosphere it sounded like uh they recommended if you came coach o'connor i was reading about it that you bring your own chair so <laughs> so to anyone who's going or, or wanting to go to the so you're saying no, softball game, no blue bring, bring, turf no bring, blue bring turf. your own chair if if at all possible you might might want to because the bleachers sounded like there's not much space so uh bring a chair if you're you're coming to the sun prairie west uh softball game tonight at toma and then your event uh Sun Prairie West track and field, which will be a sectional meet tonight at McGuanago. Yep. So if you're uh, going out to McGuanago, uh, I, I think in McGuanago there's a little bit more bleacher space. Yep. So yep. A little <laughs> you, more you, bleacher you, space. You may, not, you may not have to bring your own chair, yep. but I guess if you want to, then <laughs> you certainly could. Well, but, if uh, you're around the throws area or things like that, you know, might might want your own chair. Yeah, I know they, got, they got a chair. nice hill by their discus area that you can sit on, though. So, no, it's uh, I've been... Obviously, McGuago was a part of the Classic 8 Conference, um, so I've spent a lot of time at that at that facility coaching track meet. So it'll be fun to get back there. Thanks. I know McGuago, Coach O'Connor. I used to li- I used to live there actually. Right. I used to live in McGuago for a little little while. Actually, between let's see, I think it was well, I was seven when I moved there, and when I left there, I think it was like 12 or 13. So I've lived there about okay. five six years in McGuago. So I I know McGuago. Yep. I definitely remember it. It's when I go back now, though, it's definitely different than what I remember McGuanago being when I lived there. It's it's different now. It yeah. feels more 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 like a suburb of Milwaukee than it used to feel. Yep. Yeah, I think Muskego is probably similar to that in terms of you know how they're growing as not just a school but as a community. They're almost coming becoming that next level of sub suburbs for the Milwaukee area. Because we want to go now, Coach O'Connor, when I've gone back, I was like, it now feels, really does kind of feel like a suburb yeah. more than it used to. Yep. Like subdivisions grew and yep. definitely a l- little bit different than what I remember when, when I lived there before. Yeah, and it, it's kind of, it's interesting, right? Like the, the northeast area is, feels very suburbs because that's what um, is closest to Milwaukee, but then you get on the southwest side and it's still what you, like McGuago, right? Some farmland and and uh in rural area too so you know similar to muskego you get that mix of suburbs slash rural um area yeah absolutely well coach o'connor thanks for joining me this morning really appreciated the time and definitely have you on again here in the near future for sure thank you i appreciate it i look forward to coming back again well thank you everyone for for listening to mark madness sports and uh enjoy the rest of your week take care bye-bye Thank you, Coach O'Connor. Awesome. Awesome. No, thank you.